Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Been thinking a lot about what could I shoot or do next a video to release. And the thought occurred to me, um, well, I've been doing a lot of emails. There's, there's new people always starting this hobby, be it a small lathe or a large lathe. And right now I'm working with two people through email asking questions what tools should i get what should i do and so on and um one of them i got the email and guy said you know what do you think of this a 40 dollar wiggler like oh boy now just go get a regular edge finder so i thought maybe i should share what eight years worth of experience working in the shop, making tools, making items, you know, flame, liquor, bunch of different things. What tools um, do I think are like absolute must-haves or tools that I use the most? And on the other side, what tools do I never use that I bought making a mistake? So hopefully this can maybe help somebody even if you're experienced <laughs> keep you from buying something that's useless i don't know but uh i guess on with the video first up this guy has come in surprisingly useful in this shop yeah it's really expensive it was over a thousand dollars you can see it came from shards um but uh, what I've done with it, a number of things. I recently picked up a batch of reamers, and the larger reamers are way too long for the mill or the lathe, so you take a, a grinder, cut them off. Now I've got a very ugly edge, so you just put it in a collet and you clean up the end of it really easy with this guy. High speed steel, it loves. Chamfer it and done. I got beautiful. I've made a lot of turning cutters for the lathes, um, especially they they turn out to be the best, give the best finishes on 12L and 1018, so they're priceless. You can't buy them, so um, I've used it as a surface grinder, like uh, I just showed the video making the knurling tool. Well, I just put a three-quarter 5C in here, put the knurl our wheel in it and just go back and forth take it off it's 62 thousandths or whatever it was um, you pick up dovetails from China they're not the greatest and usually you hear them going whack 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 because only one or two teeth are cutting so I put them in here and I redo them all they're now got clean edges and they're perfectly straight. I don't know what you would call it, but they're all symmetrical or whatever. End mills. I've had some very expensive three-quarter end mills that I've had to redo. Some, one of them, I wiped out the tips and completely restored it. Another one, just cleaning it up a little bit. So, And I've made internal threading to, uh, bars and external. I've touched up my uh, existing boring bars, which are carbide, because I have the wheels, everything to do that with. This Right now, this wheel is just for high-speed steel. So I'm not sure whether I can say this machine has paid for itself yet, but um, it has definitely allows me to make some things that you just can't buy or just can't do. I don't know what I would have done with uh, that scissor knurl had I not been able to take it down to the width to match all the other wheels. So, all right, let's go on to the next item. This guy, I cannot say enough about this. This is like priceless to me in the shop. Um, where I bought it, it's called the Blue DRO, but Yuri, the guy that actually designed and wrote all the firmware, the application, it's called a Touch DRO, so you can buy it either from Blue DRO or Touch DRO. But this guy, I just zero everything out. It, I'm always using this. I mean, like, it, like some people say, oh yeah, you don't need that, just use the dial. 
Well, on this mill, the dial, or, or um, the dial doesn't account for backlash. As you can see, look at this. There's like ten thousandths or something here. With the touch DRO, I know exactly where my work is to a thousandth. I can actually change the display to go even better than that, half thousandth. The scales are only good, I think it was two tenths resolution, so, but I don't need more than that. Um, the other thing is, I was, I'll was i be talking about this, no, I already talked about it, that six inch scale. This guy, if you put it someplace, you zero out the six inch indicator, you move five thousandths, it says five thousandths, you move another five and it'll say maybe eleven or nine or something because the lead screw is not that perfect, accurate, whatever you want to call it. But I've used this for Z, X, Y, you name it, the whole circle function. I've used that so many times, making those knobs where I'm just trying to do a giant neural on the outside diameter. This thing is priceless. So um, I haven't used any of the other functions, but because I know there's different holes, patterns that you can do, and patterns in a straight line, and so on. Um, I don't think there's any more I can say about this. You got absolute incremental. It's incredible what it can do. And another absolute is the ER32 collets. I have one lay set up for the ER32s. The other's got the four inch four jaw self centering on it. And the reason is I got tired of changing from a ER32 to a jaw, a chuck, regular chuck, and back and forth. So that's why I bought the second lay. This guy stays this way. If you take it off, you got to spend a lot of time banging around to get the run out down to nothing. But the ER32s, I bought every metric, every imperial. Every time I turn around, I turn something that's an oddball size and I'll be able to hold it in the lathe to, to turn it and do the other side of it, other end of it, whatever. They also go in the mill. So these are beautiful. I have um, the common sizes. I've got extreme precision um, uh, point or it's two tenths run out or less on them. And they are nice. I've got what quarter inch, three eighths, half inch, uh, five eighths and three quarter are all high precisions. The rest are just a, a, a regular ch from China set that's not that expensive. Okay, over to the bench. Okay, these are the items that for me in this shop over the past eight years I'm always using. They're always coming out, it seems like for every project. Move this mic a little bit there. First, this was a recent discovery. The YG1 taps, um, all off of Amazon. Incredible taps. They're completely uh, flat. So you're threading truly all the way down to the bottom. Um, not the bottom taps that you buy, you really don't go all the way down. Um, the other thing is you can start tapping with them. You don't need to use a taper tap, which I love because that saves a lot of time. And the other thing, the best thing of all, is you don't have to back them out to clear chips. When you start in, the chips are just curling and coming straight up. So I could, can't remember what I did the other day, but there was something that was really thick and I was wondering if this guy could do it, not this particular one, but it went through. I didn't have to back it up, clear anything, add more cutting fluid, it worked. So needless to say, I own every, every one of these in the size for all the Imperial and all the metric screws. So, and I use them left and right. It's incredible. Um, Another thing that I use a lot is the tri points. Put a link in the description to them. Off Banggood. It's a weird box with just one clip on the side, but they are metric. But if you can see the tip of them, there are um, three levels here. 
these suckers cut into absolutely anything uh, including stainless they're beautiful <clears throat> for stainless they don't walk are they split point doesn't look like it right oh it is split point yep so you've got the best of split point world and also the this whatever technology or whoever decided to make these <clears throat> and I've used them a lot especially on stainless and they just last forever there's three different sets this is the medium set there's a large set <clears throat> the medium and a smaller set I think the smaller just loses a few of these but again these are great and I use them a lot uh, another one that's very much used is the stub length because uh, again I'm working in a small mill a small lathe so you don't have a lot of distance these are uh, priceless to me I'm always using these guys this came off of Amazon Chicago Latrobes beautiful they stay sharp They're, I just love them so okay and next my depth gauge where is it this guy constantly um, I'll show in the um, things I don't use the depth gauge this guy again no room I'm always using this to to find the depth of a hole or um, in the mill I want to see if I cut down far enough so I'll put this on top of the parallel in the part it's accurate to a thousand you could put the uh, caliper on it like this you just use this back edge thing here and you just go bang right here that's 674 and a half thou poking out right now so and I've got a longer rod too for it so if I have to do something really deep I haven't really used the longer rod this and I do have uh, listed at the end of every video is my website the print for this guy is on the website if you guys want to make it priceless tool constantly being used um, six inch indicator Wow always using this guy I got a ruby tip on this one um, yeah what do I do with it I'm always double checking the DROs that they're accurate with this guy um, I've actually checked you know because the DROs people say well I'll use the uh, thread the dials that are on the mill if you tell the mill to go five thousands you get a five thousands reading say go another five it's not ten it's all of a sudden eleven or something but I use this guy to double check my DROs from time to time I've used this guy to find rotational center to a thousandth of an inch uh, on the lays both lays um, I can't even think of other situations right now but I've used it a lot so I highly recommend you get a nice six inch I don't know whose this is or where I even got it but um, it's nice I like it a lot <laughs> dialed slightly off so six inch are used constantly what else do I use um, test indicator this guy you did spend the money mid to toyo tenth of a thou using it a lot to check uh, I can't even think of it and run out a bunch of different things when I really really need high accuracy I do own the mid to toyo half thou so each tick is point zero 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 five and I'll use that one because you know, I don't want to wear this guy out risk banging it around or busting it up so with the other one you can pretty much so tell close to a tenth but when I really need to get the accuracy or a good measurement I'll bring this guy out expensive but well worth it and I take good care of this guy let me tell you another one I always am using my angle blocks the reason is if you're trying to put something at an angle in the mill vise and you're trying to get it on this surface you, there's not enough surface to feel it whereas with these guys 
I mean, you've got a major surface area here that you know you're square. So, made these guys, double checked them on the um, sign bar. They're right on the money, really close. So, these guys I'm always using, and since they're face down, they're less than a half inch. So, I can clamp a half inch piece of material in the vise and be able to pull this out. So these are great. These guys I don't really use nowadays since I made those. So there's that. And I made this guy because things keep slipping down in the vise and I don't want it to move down and upset the angle. So this works out nice. Okay, what else is there? My angles, oh yeah, my V blocks. So many times I um, have something that's got a nice finish on it and I don't want it messed up with a metal V block. So 45, 60 deep guys and then I decided to make a shallower one because sometimes I have to hold something that's pushing the vise. It's only a three inch vise and then a shallow 45. These guys hold round material. I basically had a one piece and ran the ball driver through it so that they're exactly the same height. So when I hold something, it's being clamped in the vise like that, and it's perfect. I love these guys. They come out so many times for projects. Uh, okay, V blocks. Um, saddle stop. This was a pain to make. But yeah, it goes in between the ways and the saddle hits it and I just lock it down. This is constantly being used on both lathes. Uh, pretty sure I have the print for it up on the website. But yeah, with this pin and all this, looks like I need to really clean this thing up. It's so used. Um, I didn't have the screw in the beginning but Swarf kept getting in here screwing it up so I put the screw in there so now the saddle just hits it and it works really good um, another item that is always getting used this is made by Utica they're darn expensive but you can find them on eBay from time to time uh, for 10 20 bucks it's a torque wrench I'm always using this to torque down my inserts. What do I have it set for? Uh, I can barely even say 12. It's a little over 12 inch pounds, right? This is inch. Can you, can you, can you rate it? Yeah, pound inch pounds. So this guy sets all of my inserts to the same torque and everything works. I get great, great finishes with this. Last but not least, everybody needs an edge finder. I originally uh, bought the 3 8 but it seems like all the time I'll have um, a half inch collet in the middle. So I got tired of changing the half inch out to 3 8 then back to half inch, so I bought the half inch. These are brown and sharps, dirt cheap off of Amazon. They're like 12 15 bucks. I wish they didn't leave marks on things when you touch it because you know if I put something in there that's got a nice finish second it hits it it leaves a nice line and there's like build up on this thing or something shouldn't be throwing things off but yeah they're accurate to I uh, better than a tenth of a thou so that's kind of a summary of all the goodies that I'm always using and bringing out so I hope this helps somebody uh, a lot of things that I don't use or have rarely used. The first one here is the gauge blocks. Bought this some time ago. It's a good grade B set. But I've never used it um, for anything that I know of. So it just kind of sits in the drawer and looks pretty. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> So that's the first thing that, I don't know whether I'd recommend getting it or not. I'm sure there's a lot of people that do use it. Second item um, is the depth gauge. I, this was one of the first things I ever bought. Fowler off Amazon. I have never used it. 
and the reason is the lathe you know I'm playing with many machines many mill many lathe there's no room for this guy the surface is too big I'm gonna put this up on Craigslist and just get it out of the drawer so um, never used it and I, I'll show I've probably shown already in my favorites what I do use and next up 12 inch ruler I've got three of them basically this was the first one I picked up it's a general and I've said before I like generals because of the finish on it it's easy to read there's no reflections coming off of it this is a Pratt & Whitney both of these came uh, off eBay and I wanted it solely because it says Pratt & Whitney on it right here and this I'm surprised this was another full Pratt & Whitney that somebody just cut it off because I can see uh, it matches exactly this side and I love it because it's tense but I've used this once to try to line up something on the deep bit grinder and that was it I just needed a long straight edge I'm sure there were other things that I could use but never really used them they just sit in the drawer scribes made my own um, I really don't use die cam or any layouts like that to need a scribe but I do have them a um, couple of times I've used this guy because they did have to scratch a mark on a piece of aluminum or something as a reference line how far down to mill so I've got two of them and I don't, I've never used this guy so I made one for my wife because she uses it for different things but so scribes I don't use die cam like I said I've got blue and red the only thing this is good for is on the mill and the lathe I coated the dovetail and the gib with it <clears throat> and you can run it back and forth and it'll scrape off the die cam wherever it's rubbing or crooked so um, it's really good for that kind of work um, next up everybody recommends this I've never I, I've referred to it in the beginning and just no um, everybody recommends it this is the one if you're going to get one of these books that you really need because this one is meant for the machinist and I've referred to it once or twice but not really anything I need to know um, I already know I guess to say so this is not it uh, and the very last thing I've got a number of them never use a surface gauge this is the best one I have obviously I've done some work to it nylon really works uh, it clamps nicely and holds position you just cannot move it easy to loosen up yeah as I say that yeah easy to loosen up tighten it right down and it stays put <laughs> did a lot of lapping on this guy to the point where you can start to see the lines here of the uh, surface grinder so this guy is like perfect so that's basically um oh i didn't i don't know where i didn't say the one two three blocks <laughs> i've got a number of them these and i've got another set here in a box i think these were these are in the metric ones so these are from banggood and i'll put a link to them if you guys want they are perfect They're just as good as everything else these are the ones that I use the most if I go for it and I use it to trim the mill because what I can do is I can put it in the vise like this bang them down and clamp them now I've got a longer surface to be able to tram on to get a more accurate um, reading on the indicators so these if anything I'd say get get the non hold ones why is there a mark on there but because uh, these guys I have used a few times for different applications but I never really used the whole ones and I think I did make the yeah the screw things are in there to be able to bolt them together so the, yeah okay 